We've been testing our mRNA vaccines for over seven years in humans. And actually the body of research that we're building on here goes back over 20 years that mRNA vaccines have been developed and tested. We do have long-term data. And actually in the cancer setting, we have dosed these vaccines at much higher levels and much higher frequencies. We have a very good understanding of the vaccines and we have comfort that these vaccines are, are safe. Have you done enough tests on you know, trials with Asians for me to know that this is good for us, it works for us? So the trial was set up very deliberately to, um, to, to hit a broad swath of the global, of the human population. And, and on the Asian point specifically, I can say uh, really two things. One is we had a number substantial Asian population already, Asian ethnic populations in our global phase three trial of over 43,000 people. But we're also conducting now parallel studies in China. We're actually the first foreign company to conduct a phase two trial of a COVID vaccine, mRNA COVID vaccine in China. How soon uh, after I have a, a vaccination am I, so to say, protected? Right, so in our phase three study, uh, where we demonstrated 95% efficacy in preventing symptomatic COVID infection, um, our cutoff point was seven days after the second dose. So that's on day 28 after the first dose. How long do you project that these vaccines can protect a person? How many months or how many years? So we don't know for sure yet, because we don't have the data, but we believe that immunity is likely to be for at least a year initially. Uh, we should learn more about that as more data from our trial and from the broader research community comes in uh, over the course of this year. Some people say that vaccines like the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine are rich countries vaccines. So our intention from the very beginning uh, has been to distribute our vaccine globally around the world, across countries, regions, continents, etc. And, and that's actually one of the reasons why we pulled together from very early on in this process, a broad consortium, um, working with not only Pfizer, but also with Fosun Pharma in China. And we're also working and collaborating with other potential partners, such as the COVAX unit, which seeks to supply vaccine to the developing world. So in other words, you would price it at a lower price for let's say Indonesia or India than you would let's say for what it was sold to the US. So I can't speak to specific regions per se, but yes, there is some differential pricing where we've taken into account the, the local economic uh, reality 